for jobs that are very specialized. For example, my brother, the PhD chemical engineer, he's not going to go work and do my job. Not competing groups. Your average teacher, your average PhD chemical engineer from Berkeley, not the same ballpark. Different ability levels, different skills, different education. If you want to think about it in terms of what you see on a government job application, different KSAs, knowledge, skills, and ability, different KSAs, different job categories, different wages. Another big thing is going to be compensating differences. And I can give you a perfect example of this is if I can remember the name of the show. Is it Dirty Jobs? Yeah, it's Mike Rowe. Okay. On Dirty Jobs, you have a whole series of occupations that most of us probably have zero interest in performing. I don't want to do the kind of work that he's demonstrating on television. There are a lot of jobs I'm very glad that other people do because I don't want to do them. So, why are some jobs paid extraordinarily high even if, you know, the skills and abilities required are fairly low? Because they're not great jobs, and to get people to do them, you've got to offer them some serious cash. So, when you think about compensating differences, you want to think about things like job conditions. Is the job dangerous? Is the job dirty? Get people to do jobs that are very risky, that have a very high possibility of death and dismemberment and disability, for example. If it's very easy for a person to get hurt, then you should pay them a much higher than average wage to show up and do those jobs, even if their level of education and training is perhaps not very high. Now, that's not always true. You could have jobs with compensating differences where the workers have very specialized and, you know, very high, very specialized training, very high levels of education. For example, some, for example someone who is a master builder someone who is very good at construction, that can be a very dangerous job. So, in that case, you're dealing with high levels of ability, a lot of training, and compensating differences. You would expect those people to make a lot more money than someone who has a college degree and is perhaps working in a cubicle. So, for wage differentials, we're talking about why are different groups paid at different levels it's a combination of these things that really determines which groups are going to make more money. Now, is this fair? What follows from this? In the United States, in the past few decades, we have been narrowing the gap, for example, between the average wages for women and the average wages for men in the same jobs. But if you look at it across the board at education level, what tends to happen in a lot of communities is that persons with a very high level of education and training are not paid as much as persons with comparable education in different jobs. Example, teachers. In the last city I worked in, where I worked long term, the best educated people in town on the whole, were the people working at the high school. But they did not make great money. This also did not garner a great deal of respect. So it does not always translate that one of these categories, or even 
two of these categories, it's kind of dangerous school, will result in a higher wage. It depends on the nature of the work, uh, the general prestige for the job, and how important the community feels it is to its overall productivity and maintaining the level of